What? We're twins. Yeah. I finally got some coveralls. It's a good look. Crouch a little bit. Just, just a little bit. There you go. Look. We're twins. That's all I want to say. Alright, Zach. We are live. And it's good to be done with that motor mount for a little bit, yeah? Yeah. Well, for a little bit. For a little bit. Then. That was then. This is now. Now is this thing. Okay, so what this is, this is the next largest thing that needs to go in the van. It's a bracket for our electric parking brake. And we are working from the biggest, most awkward things that need to go in a very specific place first. Started with the motor. That can only go in one place. And it's it's in, it's settled. Um, right behind the motor and above the uh, frame rails, we got a sway bar that we gotta install. Um, and then the next biggest thing is this electric brake kit. So, what we have here- Comes with a button. Let's come with a button. And a box. So this will allow us to put the vehicle in park. Yeah. Instead um, of going, ah, you just go bloop. Yeah, right now it's got its own little controller. It's got its own little brain. What we're going to do is we're going to piggyback off of this, I'm assuming, and tap into some of these wires and make it CAN bus controlled so that uh, we'll have future interoperability with the rest of the systems on the car. But right now this will just be proprietary button relay key stop box that came from the factory. This guy, this guy, gets mounted to that guy. And then we have a series of splitters that live here. Um, pretty much, pretty much the next big thing. I thought it was gonna go on the firewall right behind the motor, but it, it doesn't look like there's enough room there. So this will probably end up going on the frame rails. Probably on the outside of the frame rails. Probably the best place for it. And we gotta figure out where the lines get run to. So that's uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. That and the sway bar. Yep. First the sway bar. First the sway bar. So the sway bar is, situation is, there's a way to take the front sway bar and put it in the back, because there's no sway bar in the back at all in these vans. So take the front sway bar, relocate it to the back and use it, and then there is an upgraded aftermarket beefier sway bar that you can put in the front. So beefier sway bar in the front, front sway bar in the rear, and so it's first that, because there's only one place that can live, you know, it has to be in a certain place. So put that in, and then wherever there is room, put this, and that will be all we get to in this episode, I'm sure. Couldn't have said it better myself. I'm good like that. All right, let's go take a look at the sway bar. You filming me? I thought you were gonna talk about the sway bar. Well, they can't even see the sway bar. There's a sway bar up here. We gotta take it out. All right. Got our sway bar assembly here. And we got our drop links here. When one front suspension member compresses, pushes this drop link upwards, transports the force across and down to the other wheel, encouraging the other wheel to compress in a similar manner. Let's hope all these bolts are this easy, yeah? Yeah. That's the downside about working on an old car is that sometimes these bolts just don't want to go. Interestingly, a lot of people say if you have a bolt that's stuck, you need to break it loose. Can you get me an extension? For what? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
to try tightening them in at first. And they say for some reason it's easier to break free by just giving it a snug and like getting that first little quarter turn. Okay. Well, they didn't want to. They were, they were uh, chased, chased bushings. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm still talking. I shouldn't be. That's okay. Oh yeah, here you go. Easy peasy. Assisted by WD-40 Specialist Rust Release Penetrant Spray with Blue Torch Technology, hashtag not sponsored, this bad boy came out surprisingly easier than I thought it would. So this is a good, this is good. We're going to clean it up, but before we do, we're going to do some role play, give you an example how this bad boy works. I'm going to be the left wheel, Zach's going to be the right wheel, and we're going to be going down the road looking for a bump. I'm going to be like, woo, look a bump, a bump, woo, and then I got to do this, and Zach's got no, no choice but go up as well. See, same thing. That's a bump. Now, Zach, you try it. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. All this does is kind of pair the wheels together so that if one goes up or one goes down, they both go together. And if in the situation where one wheel is kind of getting more stress than the other, this balances out those stresses. Volkswagen, because we're still recording here, Volkswagen made two versions of this uh, sway bar stock, 19 and 21. I'm just hoping this is not the small one. Yeah, it's 21, so we're good. Uh, the upgraded one for the front is going to be 25 millimeters, so it's going to be even beefier than this bad boy, but this will do great for the rear. This is the safer choice. It's biodegradable and it, low odor. Does it have Bluetooth technology though? It does not, but it is. Um, what on earth do you think Bluetooth technology is? I think it's like, you know, how if you heat up bolts, it, so they're playing off of that, like it's like heating up the bolt. Oh, but, cause blue is cold and red's hot. No. This is a cold way to heat up your bolts. No, as far as flames goes, blue is hot and red is cold. Oh. Yeah, but this doesn't use any fire. Uh, I, I don't understand how you don't understand. <laughs> it's a marketing thing, but it's got to make sense though, doesn't it? It does make sense. It's, they say it's like hitting the bolt with a torch. But why blue though? You just say torches are blue. Flame t torch free re technology. It still makes sense, but it sounds better. So you've got marketing and it makes sense. That should make you happy. I don't think it does though. Okay. How do you get this onto there? I don't see a bolt. Yeah. That was done at the factory. There is no bolt. It's a big old floppy wangle. Why did that come out of my mouth? It's It's a big old floppy wangle, huh? It's uh I don't know. I'm gonna stop trying to talk now. Clean the thing off. Man, Zach, this cleaned up nicer than you in a jumpsuit. All right, if you're following along at home, we are back to templates again. It's like the eternal activity that always happens. Okay, so the bottom of this face right here has got a little kick to it, and that's to accommodate the front suspension geometry. And because we want to be able to buy these again, and use these again in factory parts, in the rear, 
we gotta make a bracket. No big deal, pretty simple. So I'm just capturing this angle here onto this piece of paper and then we're gonna broadcast this geometry onto some more metal and weld it up. It's just all the same stuff again. All the same stuff again, it's super fun. If I'd have known when I was a kid I could grow up and make brackets, oh my gosh. Just all day long I've been making brackets when I was a kid, just preparing for this day. That's the angle we're going for. And we're going to make that out of steel. I think I'm just going to say it as much as possible to me. Look, I didn't tell you to get a jumpsuit. If you can't handle the heat, you gotta get out of the kitchen, you know what I mean? Zach, can you please make this for me out of metal? Twice. Sure. Right. Thank you. Okay, so I'm starting work on the top half of these brackets, and uh, Zach, can I have one of them guys? Thank you. And these guys are gonna kinda meet together, but since this has got a kink and this doesn't, I went and took a grinding wheel and scored it just like a candy bar, so it'll bend right on cue. So, we'll Which see candy one. bar? Like a Kix. Kit Kat. Kit Kat? Yeah, like a Kit Kat. Same thing. Here. Leverage, my friend, leverage. Oh yeah, dude. Get you some. And you might want to flip it over so that you can get the small end into the jaws. Big brain over here, I like it. Look, I honestly thought it would bend easier than that. I scored pretty deep. Oh yeah, this is the money right here. Can they see that on the cameras? They can see the vice. Oh, okay. And then bada bing bada boom, it's bent up. And these guys will get married together permanently until death do they part with some welds. And then the back side of this will get filled in. Alright. Perfect. Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. Alright, I'm gonna give this here welding a shot. I don't know what Zach's on about. This is amazing. Well, are you gonna run a bead or not? You're looking at what I'm doing. Like it should. Tip dip. Just like that? No more, no less? No. Yeah, you just do okay. your on it. Alright, dipped it up. That'll keep me from sticking in the hole.
Well, no, not really. Can't see any of that. Maybe a little bit. We'll see if it shows up in the video. But I'm happy with it. So this is what the welds look like out of the gun. Uh, dirty, sooty, ready for cleanup. This is what it looks post wire brush and a little bit of grinding, still some texture. And then here, we have some post polishing. It's almost like it was made this way. And I'm happy with it. It was made that way. You made it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like a factory made it this way. I guess we are kind of a factory, spaceship factory. Very small spaceship. Very small. Uh, the back side of this guy still needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but we'll get to it. It's all welded and cleaned up. The top's all welded and cleaned up. We're ready to fit this bad boy, I think. Get a good feel for how it's going to go in there. Alright, we're at about the midway point on this here sway bar project. Relocating it from the front to the rear. We have our bracket fabricated and in place with clearance holes for all of these bolts to be set in place and then bolted together. It's a little tight here, so we're gonna have to go with like a multi-bolt setup, but it works. Um, the sway bar and uh, the sway bar bushing and the retainer will get bolted to this bracket first, and then the bracket will get bolted to the frame rail. So this guy is ready to go, except for um, we don't have bolts that are appropriate, and we will get more and then put those in place. All right, down here we have the drop link that connects the sway bar to the swing arm. What we did was we repurposed a bolt hole that's already existing in the swing arm and enlarged it to support this drop link in the bushing setup, mirroring a factory kind of arrangement. All we're going to do down here is put in a reinforcing plate and call it a day. Okay, so we are paused on the swing arm. Sway, swing bar. Arm, sway bar. Sway bar. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, thanks. So we're taking a look at electronic e brake. E stop. And so we're going to look at where it's going to go, how it's going to go, why it's going to go, who it's going to go. Yeah. Anyway. Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. Now, e-stop is an electric parking brake kit. This is what you buy when you buy an e-stop, okay? When you spend a bunch more money at Classic Performance Parts, they give you this stuff that works with the e-stop. It gives you a nice bracket to work everything with. Because right now, these little splitters, we'd have had to hand roll that stuff. So I bought a kit that came with everything. And we're gonna fiddle with it, put it together, see how it fits up and then see where we can fit it on the chassis. So we've got cables, cable brackets, hardwares. So we're going to start uh, just kind of putting it all together. You know what I got? I got some instructions. Let's read those. I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna kick the camera to say stop. I'm gonna pause it until we figure this out. I think at this juncture we have the assembly assembled. And this is ready to be held up to the chassis rail and bolted in place. Um, so we're gonna go move that direction and see how this kind of hangs in place. Also, before we do that, one thing to note is we don't have the right splitter. So we're going to have to source a new one. This guy should thread on and then it should be retained by this, this nut, but it's, it's for the wrong size. Can't say I'm surprised really, you know, these things happen when you build cars from scratch. Because um, what they did is they mashed two kits together. They mashed the e-stop kit with the generic handbrake parking hardware kit. 
we got some leftover stuff. So we're just not going to use it because we have this big black bracket. The biggest, blackest bracket. Alright, so we've got our emergency brakes set up in place. It's just clamped on. And this is pretty close to where it's going to live. We have bolt holes here and here. And then we have bolts through here and through here that we're going to bolt through the frame rail. Um, we have access to the inside of the frame rail because of these, these oval holes. And so we can actually get up in here on the back side and put the nuts on that way. Now these bolts bolt just this unit to this bracket. So there's the bolt head on the back side and we're just going to clearance the frame rail with a small hole for that bolt head to fit into after we bolted this to the frame, to the bracket. Well, that's it. were already there and then we put a bunch more sounds about right yeah yeah you know sure a swiss cheese frame rail is a strong frame rail that's what i always say you ever seen the frame rails of big semis they got holes everywhere i'm not worried Here it is in place. Everything seems to be fitting up pretty good except for one or two little minor adjustments. We'll get those uh, sorted. Right, Jack? Sure thing, boss. I like it. All right, Jack, on a scale of one to ten, how did today go? One to ten. I mean, choose your own system. Still the five-star system. Two chickens and a pork chop. What? You said build your own system. I'm, okay, two, two chickens and a pork chop out of what? Um, I mean, depends. I mean, if you're Minecrafting, two chickens and a pork chop, that's like full health right there, right? Two chickens and a pork chop is a little less than full health, because you get like three, three chicken legs per meat meal. And you need, I think it's like 10 chicken legs total. And so, You'd have like nine chicken legs. Well, today was a solid eight then. <laughs> I love it. Looky here. We have retrofit a sway bar. So, as we said earlier, we took the front sway bar out. We're going to order a beefier one for that. But we took it back here to the rear put it in which required some customization such as that little beefy plate right there for the link to go into there's no bushings right now new ones will be on the way shortly there's your link coming up and then back there whoop, custom bracket to mount it to the frame rail and you can see it going on around over to the other side but, uh, man, it really fits quite nicely. We're very pleased. It's just really kind of, it's like it's factory. You can't get much, much tighter than that. It really worked out good. All right, sway bar bushing removal. Take two. This is the second one. Yeah, I did the first one. See, I did the first one, yeah. I think I figured out a technique. We'll see if I can replicate it. Like an apple peel. Did you see 
vida. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome, buddy. Second one. Getting these bushings on are going to be a pain as well, so that'll be fun. All right, now we're ready to paint this stuff up. Yay! I still have some cleaning to do. But we're close. It's dirty work and for the most part we don't like doing it, but boy it can be really gratifying. A little bit of grinding, or a lot of grinding in some cases. And it just looks so much better. Time to do the other one. everywhere. That wire cut brush in the grinder. I don't know that it's made to go in a grinder because it sheds wires at high velocity. Yeah, I was like a porcupine right here in my midsection. Gosh. Bing, 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 bing. You know? I had one stuck in my toe. It went through my shoe and stuck in my toe. I think that's what you get when you buy cheap wire brushes. But of course, I remember growing up, it was like we had a wire brush, and that would shed as well. So, they didn't use to make them better. Somebody out there makes them better. Maybe. We yeah. got a lot done. We got this sway bar in. We got the uh, parking brake assembly in. Two big old parts that we needed to locate in 3D space. Mm -hmm. Pretty damn close to electronics. We're saying we got it all done. We're saying we got as much done as we were going to get done today. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Set yeah. a goal. Electric parking brake. Once again, we have to remove a bunch of stuff and clean stuff. And replace bushings, so there's no point in hooking it up yet. But yeah. it's all in situ and everything, too. Yeah, it's been tested. So, everybody's happy. Yeah. Um, Thanks for coming along. <laughs> Thanks for watching us put in a sway bar and a parking brake. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to say. Yeah, I ran out of things to say a long time ago. Oof. I'm hot. Yeah, it's a hot I'm day. It's a hot day.